Listen, basis loaded bottom of the ninth. I want to make a video and I want to talk about alcohol, wine, whatever you enjoy, whatever your vice is. Um, Delta pilot just got 10 months in jail and he said, I'm terrified. And I want to make this video because he's telling the truth. And this is why I always say stay focused before you end up homeless. When I say homeless, you could you go into jail. That's not your home. Jail is designed for animals. So if you go to jail, you're homeless. You're living. I want you to think about it. You're living with the housing that the government designed for you. That's not your home. You're homeless when you go to jail. So the fact that he said, I'm terrified, I felt that. And I'm like, you know what? I got to make a video on this. This is a subject a lot of people don't want to talk about because we hope that it's not true. And sometimes when things are true, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. But listen, when you see somebody that's a soldier in the military, listen, it's OK to say thanks for your service. And it's the same thing as a person who loves to travel. Let it breathe. When I see a pilot, I always say thanks for your service because, listen, they have the most important job. They're the last line of defense. And a lot of people don't think about it, but I'm going to break it down because we're so accustomed to being spoiled. And that's what the airline industry is all about is about spoiling the customer to the point that they don't see the logistics of what happens and what goes on behind the scenes. But when you arrive at your bags, unless you got to carry on or unless you pack light, sometimes, listen, it's okay to just take a backpack and just go to Bali. It's okay to take a backpack and just go to the Philippines, let it breathe. But if you have a heavy bag, what happens is you have to go to the gate agent. That's step number one. Then the gate agent, they're going to check your bags. Then you go through TSA. That's probably the most difficult part because you could always get searched for random. Now, that's what happened with the pilot. Let it breathe. There's a step. You just don't go. You just don't walk in an airport and go to the jet. It doesn't work like that unless you fly private. Now, with JSX, JSX does work like that. That's a semi-private jet. And yes, you do walk and you just go to the jet. But if you're on a normal jet like this pilot was flying and got 10 months in jail, there's a process. And when it comes to TSA, you never know if they're going to select you for a random. They selected him for a random and he had a half open Jägermeister in his bag. He felt too comfortable. Listen, alcohol, weed. Whatever city you're going to, it's going to be there. Trust and believe. Even if it's not legal, even if they don't have a dispensary, trust and believe. Whatever city you're going to, there's always some guy who knows who has some loud. There's always some guy who knows how to find the best gas. There's always some guy that can tell you where a liquor store is located. And if you don't know where a liquor store is located, hop in the Uber, go to any hood. You will find a liquor store on any corner. But as far as your job, if you are the pilot... It's like driving a, it's like driving a truck. It's the same thing. If any Mack truck or any 18 wheeler, if anything happened, guess what? Oh, it's going to take a couple cars out. So when you're a pilot and you have three rolls and just say you got 32 rolls, 36 rolls, you do the math. And if it's a full flight, then you got business class. You have over a couple hundred on that flight. And I understand Alcohol is real. This is why I want to make this video to everybody out there that's not an alcoholic, but you enjoy drinking. Listen, some drinks taste good. When you go to the islands, they make a pina colada like none other. But you got to stop and think. What happens if you actually moved to the island and you lived on the island? Would you be pina colada in it up every day? That's something to think about. Because you could go to the islands, move to Brazil, move to Punta Cana, move to Aruba, move to Jamaica, and you can become an alcoholic every step of the way. So for everybody who likes to drink, this is a very important video. Everything in moderation, man. And when I mean everything in moderation, everything in moderation, this dude was holding on to this Jägermeister like it was his last. Like, whatever city he was going to, trust me, 
Jägermeister is there. A lot of people drink Jägermeister. He's not the only one. But the fact is, for all the people who drink Jägermeister, they're probably not a pilot. And they found the Jägermeister in his bag. They did a breathalyzer. And the thing about alcohol when it comes to committing a crime, listen, I promise you, if I ever sip on something in my house, I never hop in the car. Because the thing about the breathalyzer is they have a limit. But one thing they don't tell you in life, and I feel, listen, for this, I will be a whistleblower. A, you're not supposed to be drinking and driving. I feel like it should be banned for all bars to serve people who are driving. And they should be looking at surveillance camera. They should have security. And if you go to a restaurant, I feel that the restaurant should not allow you to drink. And if you do drink, you have to leave your keys. They have to, there has to be a policy because it's like, it, we can shut DUIs down. When people go out, it's so normal to get a glass of wine. If you're balling, if you're feeling good, if you're feeling lucky, you might get a bottle at the table. So if you drink, if you order whatever steak, pasta, and you get a bottle, just say you take a little sip. And this is why I don't drive, even if I take a little sip, because anything that you blow and it comes back as a .001, they still could lock you up. So there is, so to me, this is why I'm telling guys, because I feel like, they create jails, they create laws, but it's like they want us to break them. They want us to test the limit. No, you cannot. No, do not test the limit as a pilot. You have too many you have too many lives in your hand. And from now on, um, this should, I feel like when things happen in life, especially as content creators, it's like we have to get this out for all the future pilots out there, for all the future pilots, anybody who wants to fly a plane, put a 44 in the chat. Listen, you could, it could wait. And this is why you don't want to be an alcoholic, because when you become an alcoholic, it's like the alcohol becomes your girlfriend. So you got to have you got to take her. No, 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 no. No, you got to understand alcohol. Listen, in moderation, wine, everything in moderation, bear everything in moderation and understand when you work for the airline industry, it's all about the customer. And them having a seamless transition from one city to another city. And as the pilot, you always got, listen, from the pilot to the gate agent to the people on the ramp, it's all about the customer. Whatever you're going through at work, put that aside when you clock in. Put that aside when it's time to go to work and go to work. And as the pilot, you have one job, and that's to stay sober and to fly the plane correctly. If you're on a Boeing, it might not be your fault. But if you're not on a Boeing, listen, move the plane and keep it towing. It's simple. Get the passengers who pay anywhere upward from 700. Some tickets go to 17,000. Imagine paying 17,000 for a ticket and your pilot showed up tipsy. This right here is life changing for this man. And maybe this might be the victory over alcohol that he has been battling with. Nobody's perfect. A lot of people, they like to act like they're perfect. But being an alcoholic or alcohol, it could creep up on anybody. And when it's all said and done, you have to watch their intake. If, and you know, you got some people that might take a little sip, but you got some people that drink a whole bottles. You got some people are getting bent all day and they're showing up to work drunk. And if you have a regular nine to five, you show up to work drunk. It's a little different because you're not the pilot. I'm not saying driving drunk is OK, but man, when you're a pilot, you have too many lives on your hand. You probably have over 200 to 400 people on your plane. And if you're drunk and just say. You can't even see your vision become impaired. Man, if that plane ever runs in to an airport, you know how many people are gone? Even the people on a plane and the passengers? Listen, stay focused before you end up homeless. It's easier said than done. But if this pilot, if he just stayed focused, did his flight, then when he got, you know, to wherever he was going, you know, he cracked open the Jägermeister. Guess what? He would not be in jail for 10 months. I don't care what anybody says. 10 months is too long, especially when you're not, 
you know, especially when you're not in the system, especially when you're not institutionalized. That was the word I was looking for. Going to jail for 10 months is too long. And I feel for him. And for everybody that's dealing with the fight to alcohol, listen, don't drive. If you're going to sit, sit in the privacy of your own home. But if you're going to sit, don't drive a car. And I never thought I'd have to say this, but don't drive or don't fly an airplane. Let it breathe.